Welcome to Financial Accounting from Parkbench Tutors. We're going to continue our work on accruals and look at revenue recognition and the matching principle. One of the things to understand about accruals accounting is that we make use of the time periods. So the first principle that we're going to have is that revenues are recognised in the period in which the revenue is earned. So normally we are going to produce accounts month by month and we're going to use that in this particular podcast. So this is then the revenue recognition principle. We recognise revenues in the period in which the revenue is earned. So how does that work then? Let's consider an engineering company that sells electric batteries and in June they sell four batteries at $3,000 a piece, that's $12,000 and the batteries are sold on credit and they receive the payment for the batteries in July of that year. Now, to make it simpler in these transactions, we're going to ignore any taxes. We're just going to try and keep the entries fairly simple. So, what have we got then? We've got two dates. On June the 20th, the batteries are sold and on July the 18th, the payments received. So if we apply the revenue recognition principle, what we say is the revenue was earned at the point in which the batteries are sold and passed to the customer, which is in June, on June the 20th. So what entries then do we need in the accounting system? Well, on June the 20th, what we need is to debit the accounts receivable because we're going to be owed the money for the batteries and we're going to credit the revenue account which in this case is sales revenues so that's in June when the first part of this transaction took place right the revenue was earned and then in July the cash received is recorded now, I've already recorded the revenue in the period in which the revenue was generated so what we've now got to do is record the cash received so what we're going to do is debit the cash account with $12,000 and we'll credit the accounts receivable with $12,000 because we're no longer owed that money, so we can remove it from accounts receivable. Right, so how then do we recognize expenses? Well, we do this with what we call the matching principles, and you'll sometimes hear this uh, dealt with by another name, and it may be described as letting the expenses follow the revenues. But the idea is exactly the same as before. You record the expense in the same period as the revenue to which it can be matched. OK, what about an example of this? So we have a supermarket which receives an invoice on the last day in May for $2,000 for the supply of electricity during the month of May. So the expenditure then took place in the month of May. Now the invoice is paid on July the 12th. So let's apply the principle then. The expense is recorded in May since this is the period in which the electricity was actually used and that matches the expenses to the revenues that were earned during that same period. So our accounting entries will be to debit the electricity expense with $2,000 and to credit accounts payable with $2,000. The payment of the electricity invoice is recorded then on the date in which the payment actually takes place, which is July the 12th. So the expense is recorded in May when the expense occurred. The liability for the expense is recorded in accounts payable in May, which is when the expense occurred. So in that way, we follow the matching principle. And then when the payment is actually made, we will debit accounts payable and we will credit the cash account. That's with $2,000. So accrual accounting then is used for all businesses that have to produce annual reports. In fact, if you are following GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, then you use accrual accounting. And most companies obviously have to follow GAAP. If a company used cash accounting, it wouldn't meet those requirements. Now, surprisingly, many of us actually use cash accounting with our own personal finances when we perhaps would be better off using accrual accounting. In other words, we very often look at what we've got in the bank and ignore what we owe or are owed, which is a way in which a lot of people get into difficulties. So, cash against accruals. How then can we show the differences? Let's just consider a transaction here. Hobnail Construction carrying out building works for Daisy Roots in December. Right, it's December 2013. 
So labor and materials for the construction work amount to $40,000 and they are paid in 2013. But the payment for the work carried out, that's the revenue if you like, is not received until January of the following year in 2014. So how might these entries affect financial reporting? Well, let's look at what happens if we use accruals accounting or accounting with cash. So in 2013, if we use accrual accounting, we record the revenue and the expense because that's when that occurred and that will give us a net income of $20,000. But in cash accounting, we would record a revenue of zero and an expense of 40000 which would suggest a net loss of 40000 And if we look at what happens then in 2014, under accrual accounting, there will be no net revenue or expense associated with this transaction because it took place in 2013, so there would be no net income. But if it was cash accounting, we would record a revenue of 60000 and an expense of zero, suggesting a net income of 60000 Well, you can see there are problems there. Because under accruals accounting, the net income in 2013 is 20000 but if you do using cash accounting, they, you would be recording a net loss of 40000 So what you would be doing, of course, would be to understate the revenues for 2000 And similarly, if you looked at 2014 and you were using cash accounting, you would be overstating the revenues because you would have a net income of 60000 there. Now remember then, in financial accounting for companies, we use accrual accounting, not cash accounting. That ends this short podcast on accruals brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and presented by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies.